Time now to take a look at what's been making headlines across the globe and Diptika Laurent is here with me in the studio. Hello, Dipti. Hi, Annette. You're starting with an alarming study about declining levels of fresh water in mountain glaciers. Yeah, these alarming studies, unfortunately, are all too common these days, but uh, this particular study was pu uh, published in Nature Geoscience uh, on Monday and it warns that mountain glaciers, which provide a source of fresh water for nearly 2 billion people around the world, may have less ice than estimated in the Andes, for instance, scorching summer heat melted the snow cover prematurely, which means that the glacial ice underneath is melting at a faster pace. Um, the study did find that mountain glaciers in the Himalayas, for instance, have 37% more ice, but as temperatures rise, these glaciers are also coming under pressure. Um, compounding this problem is the fact that mountain glaciers are notoriously understudied, um, making their future even harder to predict. And you've also found an article which shows that the Indian city of Mumbai is particularly affected by this. Well, this is a long read uh, article from the Atlantic uh, website, Annette, which looks at how sea level rising Flooding and landslides are stretching the city to its limit. City authorities are finalizing a climate action plan, uh, the website says, but it must confront uh, long-standing issues in the city like housing shortages, drainage issues and sanitation. Uh, while there are emergency measures in place for climate disasters, these measures are just not apt for dealing with the sort of frequency of the disasters as they, as they occur in the, in the years to come. Uh, you, there's also an article looking at the continent of Africa, which is also seeing its problems exacerbated by climate change. The number of people struggling, struggling to feed themselves has risen by 40 percent, according to the World Meteorological Organization. And this is a German paper which um, really is appealing to the German government as uh, it has the rotating presidency of the G7 uh, to really pave the way for climate diplomacy and make Africa a part of that dialogue. Now, moving now to Canada, where the city of Ottawa has been besieged by truckers' protests against COVID restrictions. Well, it became uh, it began as a small protest 11 days ago against vaccine pa passports, sparked by new requirements that truckers crossing the border from Canada to the U.S. would have to be vaccinated. Uh, they then drove into the city and blockaded downtown Ottawa in a movement that's now becoming that we know now as the freedom as freedom convoy. Um, amidst these growing tensions with authorities, the mayor of Ottawa has declared a state of emergency on Sunday. This article from The Guardian is a really good explainer if you're trying to get your head around what exactly is going on. Um, the Canadian paper, The National Post, says this truckers group is, is unlike any group that came before it. They're equipped with money. They have big rigs that can house them indefinitely. And they also have the determination to stay until these pandemic restrictions are lifted. The paper's opinion writer today blaming the Ottawa police and Prime Minister Justin Trudeau uh, and the mayor for a, quote, stunning failure of leadership. Now, back here in France today, marking 60 years since police in Paris uh, at a metro station killed nine people protesting in favour of Algerian independence. This was a, a pretty bloody uh, episode in French history, and at this uh, this event took place in the metro station of Charon in East Paris on February the eighth, nineteen sixty-two. Uh, a po protest with police turned ugly on the streets. Police charged at these pro-independence, um, uh, these protesters who were um, uh, protesting in favor of Algerian independence. They sought refuge in the underground metro station, uh, and then they were basically barricaded in with the exits and uh, entrances blocked. Nine people died either through suffocation in the metro or uh, through um, after being hit in the head. Uh, all protesters were part of France's CGT union, and most were Communist Party members, which is why L'Humanité, the communist paper, is looking at this today. The French government has never publicly accepted responsibility for its role in the bloody event. OK, finally, a change of pace, um, Dipti. <laughs> Valentine's Day is around the corner. Already. <laughs> I know, it's incredible. Um, and a Las Vegas company is offering people the chance to join a very <laughs> special club. <laughs> a very exclusive club, too. It's a mile-high club. Uh, a Las Vegas company called Love Cloud allows you to make... Uh, your fantasies of a mid-sky romp come true, but without the grubbiness of an airplane toilet. Uh, for the neat price of just under $1,000, you can join the Mile High 
Club uh, in a 45-minute private plane ride. Uh, the Independent tells us that the plane is equipped with red satin sheets, sex position p- pillows, and a custom-made foam mattress, and of course, the uh, tacit discretion of the pilot. The company's founder told the New York Times recently, I quote, you come with a smile on your face and you leave with an even bigger smile on your face. As long as you can do it all within 45 minutes, so that includes takeoff. And <laughs> exactly, <sitting>. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that, Dipti.